It's your open source advocate and I'm back with another video and today we're going to talk about using this to install any Linux distribution or Windows on any machine using a really great tool called Ventoy. Now I've known about Ventoy for a few years and I heard about people using it and I kind of wondered what it was and I remember a few years ago I tried to set it up and I just didn't have that great a luck. So I kind of just stopped and I kept using things like Belena Etcher or just using DD to copy an ISO onto a USB drive and, and do it that way. And I don't change my distros super often. I'd say, you know, once a year, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, just depending on the distro and how much I'm liking it or whatever, you know, new is coming out. But trying distros out is really, really great. And I love to do that. And a lot of times I like to do that on an actual piece of hardware. So a USB drive with a live CD or a live ISO is really great. So Ventoy is really a, an awesome tool for that, and it's gotten a lot better, and it's open source, so I thought, you know, let's cover that. Let's, let's show people how to do this. So maybe you're a Windows user, and you've been wanting to try Linux, and you just haven't thought, you know, I want to go learn how to do this, or I want to go download the tools to do this, or I want to go figure out how to do this. The other great thing about it is if you're a system admin, and you have like a clean version of something, like maybe you have your different kind of tools that you use on other people's desktops and you want to take that with you. I know there's there's what they call portable apps. Those are great. But maybe you would rather stick in a USB drive and start up a certain image from a different distro or a certain image of Windows to try to troubleshoot some problem that somebody's having on their machine. Ventoy is a great way to do that. And the cool thing about it is you put a bunch of distros inside of the Ventoy system and then you can boot off of any of them. So it's not something where you're having to create an actual installable USB drive. You're really just taking the ISO or the image file or whatever else you download and you're sticking that into the USB drive inside of the Ventoy folder. And basically that's it. You're up and you're running. It's really awesome. So I've got one that I've already created. So I'm just going to plug that in here. I'm going to drag it over on the screen so you can see what's going on here. So on this machine, you can see I've got Kubuntu 2204 desktop. I've got Ubuntu 2204 desktop. I've got a Windows 10 and I've got a Windows 11 image, both of them. And I've got a Zorin OS 16.1. So I've got several different kinds of images here and I use the Windows 10 and 11 for clients that I work with who still need Windows for, for various things or have asked me to take an old machine they've got and just upgrade it. They've got a lot of stuff in place that I don't want to mess with and maybe they're not ready for the switch to Linux. I have to kind of evaluate that on a person by person basis. but. This comes in really handy just to have these ready and be able to go. And with OEM machines, a lot of times the, the, the key is already there. I don't have to go and get a key or anything. So I can just use this ISO to get everything upgraded. It just does it in place. It's not really such a big deal like it used to be with the, with having to have the, the key ready and all that kind of stuff. So it's a little bit easier, but uh, definitely this is awesome to be able to have this. So if you look at what actually loaded up, there's vto.efi. So this, this EFI kind of partition that has a few things here. And then you've got the Ventoy folder. So you've got this Ventoy folder and really this is the thing that makes it super great is that you just, you really truly download the ISO and drag it into the Ventoy side of this and it's ready to go. When you run Ventoy, then you get these options in a menu to actually boot the machine. So it's very, very simple and very straightforward. Now getting Ventoy installed on the USB is a little bit, a little bit of a different story, but they've got some really great easy ways to do that these days. So they've got two methods. Uh, we'll go through those methods right after this. I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at Patreon. Seriously, you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week. I really, truly enjoy it, and I just can't say thank you enough. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe. Let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel. Plus, you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like, just click on that thumbs up, and that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. So one of the things I like to always cover about any open source distribution is the way that they support their continued development. And Ventoy is no different. They've got a ton of really great stuff. So right here they tell you 1,100 plus image files have been tested and shown to work. 90% of distros on DistroWatch are supported. This is this is huge. This gives you a really good confidence in what you're going to be able to do with this thing. Now, Ventoy itself, they have a subscription service. It is not something you have to use. It is 100% open source. You can use it for free, but they're letting you know like, hey, 
We have the subscription service. This is how we support the ongoing development. It'd be great if you chipped in. So just be aware that you can go out there and do that. You can also go out here and donate. So it's just a little bit of information. This is their main page here for the Ventoy site. And then they've got the Ventoy browser, which is the one I'm gonna talk about today. But then they've got this thing called Ventoy Plugs On, and it just tells you, hey, this is just a UI that, that lets you basically work with the Ventoy plugin configuration. And then they've got a list of their features here, which I'll let you guys read through. You guys can all read, so I don't need to read this for you, I'm sure. But as you go down, you can kind of see what it looks like. So once you actually get Ventoy set up and you've got your images set up on the Ventoy USB drive, you'll when you boot a machine and you go to that USB drive, this is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna to come to a screen like this where you have these different options where you can select the image that you want to run. And basically it just runs you through that process. It's very straightforward. They've got hotkeys and shortcuts down here at the bottom. Obviously it's got uh, international language support, so that's pretty great. They've got contact information and of course friendly links. So some really, really cool information, but the best thing is they've got a really great wiki. So I've just opened that up in another tab. They've got all kinds of information out here. So if you're wondering about anything, can it do this? How does it do this? This is probably the best place to start looking. I always get a ton of questions in the comments and I don't mind that, but a lot of times I just end up pointing people back to the documentation on the site for the people who make the software because that's the best place to get the most up-to-date information. Sometimes I just don't know. Sometimes I just don't want to give you an answer and then you go to find out that it's been changed even since I made that video because sometimes my videos are two or three years old and you're asking me questions about this stuff. So if you look over here at the get started, they've got some really great information. You can kind of see what this looks like and right here you've got more of a Windows uh, kind of system that's set up but it shows you hey here's what's going on and this is really the installer for Ventoy in Windows. So you can see that you're getting 1.0.82 in this case. It's going to be XFAT so it's going to set up your, your machine. And then here you can see this is more like the update or the after the installer to show you like, hey, it was 1.0.82 and you've got 1.0.82, so great job. Then you're pretty much ready to kind of keep going. So you also have CLI mode if you're on Windows, if you prefer to do that. And then for Linux, the GUI mode, they have a couple of things. So you've got one, the GUI for GTK or QT. And then they've got the web GUI. I really like the web GUI. This was the best thing that I could have done. So this is one that I want to talk about. And then they've also got the CLI mode for Linux. So if you come down, you can kind of see what's going on here. And you've got this ventoy.sh, and then you've got a command, an option, and what drive you're trying to target. So you want to figure out what drive that, that USB drive is that you're plugging in. So I'm going to unplug the ventoy USB. And I'm just going to plug in a fresh one that I don't even know what's on it. Um, it's just one that was sitting on a shelf, but hey, if I don't know what it's on it, it must not be too important. And we'll drag this back over. Let's just look at what I plugged in and what it found here. So I plugged in this one that just labeled my name and it's basically got Rustesk the app image on it and that's fine. So I don't need to have Rustesk app image on here anymore. So I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna remove that. I'm just gonna move that to the trash. Don't even need it. And so this USB drive is now empty, but it's not formatted properly. So we need to go through that process. So it says here, you're gonna download the installation package. So Ventoy, whatever version, Linux, Tarda, GZ, and then decompress it. So you're gonna basically expand that thing. And then you're gonna run it. So it says, we need to run this shell script as root. So we need to make sure that you're running root if you do this, because it does have to do some things to a drive. It has to format a drive and things like that, which does require root privileges. So just understand that. Once you've done all of these things, you're gonna just copy the image files over. And then you're gonna run updates on Ventoy if you need to. So pretty easy. The CLI is really great, but I definitely wanna go check out the web GUI. Um, if you look at it, it looks exactly like the Windows system did whenever we were looking at that while ago. Um, it's got that same kind of look and feel to it. it it's, there's no difference in the UI from what they say between this and the Windows install or the GTK install, so just be aware of that. So let's go over to downloads. Let's open that up in a new tab. So here we've got this tar.gz. We can check out when it was released, which was pretty pretty recently, just at the end of March. This is the second day of April, 2023, so, so not too long ago. It's only 19 megabytes, it's pretty small. So we're gonna click on that. It's gonna bring us to their releases, which is great. It's 1.0.90, and we'll just come down here to the assets. So here's linuxtar.gz, livecd.iso, and the windows.zip. So whichever one you're kind of aiming for, then you can get that. And then they've got the SHA if you need to get that and check it as well. So we'll just download the tar.gz here. And it's downloaded pretty quick and easy. So we'll just open up our terminal emulator right here. And a lot of people ask me which terminal I use. And this one that I'm going to bring up is Tabby. So I'm just going to full screen it over here. And I've got some, some specialized uh, 
ZS, oh my ZSH and some other things, uh, power level 10K and stuff like that installed. But I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for you guys. So, okay, you see what happens there? That's kind of weird when it happens. And we're going to go to um, downloads. And we'll just run that real quick. And if we if we list that out, you can see that we're going to have ventoy.1.0.90 and it's linux.tar.gz. So we're just going to say tar x vzf ventoy and if we do an ls again you'll see that it created a folder here called ventoy 1.0.90 so we can cd into that folder now you can do all this through the ui too you don't have to do this in the terminal um, just be aware of that so if we do an ls inside of this folder here if i type it correctly there we go you're going to see we've got ventoy ventoy tw uh, 2 disk.sh Ventoy GUI, so the AMD CH64, Ventoy GUI i386, so if you're on a 32-bit machine, you've got you've got all these different versions of what's going on here. So what we're looking for is the web UI. So if you look right there, and we should be able to find Ventoy Web right here. So we're just gonna do sudo bash Ventoy Web. Let's try Ventoy Web dot sh put in your super user password and it's going to tell you that it has started so we've run this as local host so it tells you right here here is the site you need to go to so we're going to click on it let's just see if that'll open it up I think I have to control click and then here is the Ventoy GUI so I'm just going to full screen this and I'll zoom it up a bit for you guys so first thing you have language options so you can change the language if you need to you have options Secure boot support. Do you want that or not? Check it or uncheck it. Partition style. If you click on that, you'll see here's the different things. It's a Sabrent USB. It's 1024 gigabytes. It's SDB. I don't believe this is SDB, so I need to find what, what I want. But here's my different options. So I've got a 64 gigabyte. This is going to be the one right here. So you want to make sure you pick the right one. Sabrent is my internal drive. I don't want to use that. I don't know. Well, I think. Um, so I don't want to use SDB. I don't want to use this one. This one is my, my external drive that's connected through USB as well. I want to use this one. So if you're not sure and you're not sure how to figure out which drive is what, you should unplug every other USB drive you have just so that you only have one to choose from. In my case, 64 gigs is the one that I want. I know that's the one that I want, but that's how I choose that. Now, when you click on options, you have the partition style is MBR or GPT. It's up to you how you set this up. You can pick whichever one you want. You have partition configuration. So it says preserve some space at the end of the disk. It's up to you whether you do that or not. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that right off the top of my head. I'm sure there's good reasons to do it though. Then you've got clear Ventoy so you can clear it out and then show all devices. So it's kind of up to you how you set this up. But again, you want to make sure you pick the correct drive. Now, if you're not sure how to pick the right drive, you can go back to your terminal. And we're just going to open up another tab here. You can open up another terminal window. It's kind of up to you how you do that. I'm just going to click on the plus. We're going to do LSBLK. And that's going to show us all of the things that are connected to our machine. And it's going to tell us whether those are mounted, where they're mounted, that kind of information. So here I can see these are Media Brian, and this is called Brian. Remember, that was the one that I found that I cleared that off of. So this is the one that I want, and it's SDD. It's on partition SDD1 is the one that's called Media Brian, but it's this drive called SDD. So I've picked the right one. But you can look through your different drives and see like, okay, what are these? Where are these mounted? What is the space? And now I can see which ones I have. So LSBLK is the command that you want to use for that. I'm just going to exit this terminal here. So we come back to the ones running our, our web, web browser here. And we'll go back to Ventoy. So I've selected the right one. Really, really great. Really simple. I've set up my options. Happy with it. It's going to do an MBR, which is fine. And I'm going to do install. It's going to come up and say, hey, warning, when you do this, this thing's going to be formatted. All the data that's on it's going to be lost. If you don't want to do that, hit cancel. If you say, yep, I know it's already fine. I've gotten rid of everything or I've backed up everything that was on it, hit OK. Once you click OK, it does a double check. It's like, are you really sure you want to do this? So you're going to see this double check. Don't, don't be thinking it's messed up. It, it does that on purpose. Just click OK again. It's going to go through the process. It shows you how much approximately what it's done tells you what it's done and it says info congratulations Ventoy has successfully been installed on this device okay that's great 
It says the status is ready and it shows us what version we've got and what version it is, so that's great. Later, if we want to update, we've got that option. We just need to run the new version of Ventoy, plug in that drive, and it'll show us like, hey, you've got 1.0.91 or something, and this will say 1.0.90, and you'll click update, and it'll do that process. But it'll probably warn you again, like it might get rid of the stuff that's on there. So be aware of that. But there you go, we've done it. The USB drive is ready, and it's ready for us to use. So we can close the browser. There's nothing left to be done there. So I've come to the Endeavor OS site. I'm going to go and grab some uh, a, a download here. So you've got you go to the downloads and it's like latest release, installation, wiki. So a lot of information. So anytime you're going to install a distro, it's really good to know where this kind of information is at because you may run into little issues. It happens. Let's see. Okay, we can download here. So there's all these different places to download from. I'm in the USA, so I want to find one that probably will work for the USA. It's got ISO torrent. Yeah, I want to do ISO at this point. Um, we could do torrent, but I'm, I'm not trying to take too long here. Um, so we'll go to USA download. It's going to start. So we'll let that run. And when we're ready, we're going to move that over and actually put it on the Ventoid disk. All right, so that's done. Endeavor OS is downloaded. Under the ease, we've got Endeavor OS right here. So we're just going to just going to take that and I'll open up another uh, another file explorer. And I'm just going to drag that this way and I'll go down to the one called Ventoy. And it's, it's empty, so I'm just going to grab Endeavor OS. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to bring it over here and paste it. All right, so I've got my drive set up, and I've moved over several different ISO images here. So we've got several different Linux distributions that I've been wanting to try anyway. So uh, really pretty easy to do. I just went and downloaded the ISOs and then stuck them onto this drive. I'm going to pull this drive out of my system here and I'm just going to move it over to my test system which is back over here behind me uh, over my shoulder and I'm going to set up my phone as a camera so that's not going to be the best experience but it should give you an idea what you're going to be able to see and what you can do with this. I just don't have the equipment to record the screen when I'm booting from USB drive at this point but I think this is going to give you a really great idea of what you can do with Ventoy so let me get that moved over there. All right, so I've got my other system set up over here. This is a system that I use for playing games with the family, and I'm going to plug in my USB drive down here in the back of the PC. It's just, just below the table here. And then I'll reboot the system, and we'll bring it up into basically boot menu mode. Uh, and you can see right there at the top that it sees the USB drive pretty much immediately. So again, if we click on it, it opens it up, and you can see that we've got our ISOs right there. So I'm just going to go over to the top right. I'm going to go to my shutdown option. And whenever it comes back up, I just need to use my hotkey. And that brings up my boot menu. And you can see right here that I've got several different options. So really what I want to look for is just the one that says the USB 3 drive. As we go down the list here, we get the USB 3 drive highlighted. We'll just press enter to say that's the one we want. And you can see we come right up to Ventoy, which has all four of our distros ready to go. The first one we'll try here is OpenSUSE. I haven't run OpenSUSE in a long time. Uh, it's going to come up and you're going to pick just normal boot mode unless you need a different mode for some reason. But once OpenSUSE comes up, it gives you a few options. Now it says boot from hard disk. This means to boot from the actual hard disk inside the drive, which is Ubuntu 22.04, so I don't want to do that. They've got the installation option, but I also don't want to run through an installer yet because I don't want to overwrite my system. They've got an upgrade, so if you're running OpenSUSE and you wanted to upgrade some reason with a disk, you could do that, or, or in this case, a, a thumb drive. They've got the more options here. So you can do your rescue the system, boot a Linux system, and so on. So you just got some different options that you can go through. This is really the OpenSUSE installer. And I think if I go back to boot from disk, this will just take me back to Ventoy actually, which is fine. So we saw that one run. Let's do one that should boot us into the OS. Let's do Endeavor OS here. And again, boot normal mode. And we'll just hit enter for the first option there for Endeavor OS. And the post starts coming up. Now this is pretty normal. Endeavor is based on Arch, so that's pretty normal uh, to see the post for Arch. Uh, a lot of distros try to hide the post screen and just put it behind a splash screen, which is fine, but I think that's just more for the comfort of the average user who's not used to seeing this and may not realize that this is actually what's going on in the background when your machine boots. So we should see these things. As long as we don't see like a ton of errors or problems, then generally we're gonna come up to a, to a usable system. And there's the mouse cursor. That's always a good sign that we're at least getting a window manager started up, which is great. This one looks to be maybe KDE. I can't remember which one I downloaded now. Um, let's see. So once it finally starts, it comes up with a welcome screen and a way to kind of get started with the system. That's great. You can close that out if you don't want it. I'm just going to go through its reboot process. And then to get back into Ventoy, I'll just use my hotkey again to bring up the boot menu when it's ready. 
And generally what you're looking for is just like your post screen from your motherboard maker or the machine maker. Just depends on kind of which thing you're looking for. But there we go. Once I see that, I hit my hotkey, it brings up the boot menu. And we can again arrow down till we get to our USB drive and then hit enter. And this time let's go do Garuda. I'm kind of interested in Garuda Linux. And I got the Wayfire version. I'm just going to hit enter to go to normal mode. Yeah, so now we should get that same kind of Arch post screen because again, Garuda is based on Arch Linux. There we go. It starts loading everything up. And we've got the mouse cursor again. So that shows us again that the window manager is at least trying to start up. That's always a good sign. And then there's the background for Garuda. And this is the Wayfire desktop. Wow, okay, that's got some nice little effects to it. Pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, so I mean, this is a not a bad looking system. Comes right into the installer. So if you want to install it, you can. But I'm just going to close that window out. Of that. And then it's got the same kind of welcome menu to walk you through some of the starting steps. So pretty cool. It's got those nice effects. Uh, let's see if we go here. That's that welcome menu again. So you can kind of see the effects. This this. This is kind of nifty, I guess, to start with, but I don't know if I'd want to use it all the time. There's their start menu, so I'm guessing you can search and do a few different things to kind of run through these. They've got a nice icon set, pretty cool. Um, if I click away, I click on it again, it goes away. Uh, let's see, I bet this is Firefox. This looks like it. Yeah, so here's kind of their version of Firefox. I think they're calling it Fire Browser. There it goes. So it brings up YouTube. Just took a second for it to kind of get started there, but all right. So the browser works. I mean, it looks like everything's working here. We can close out of that. And yeah, you can kind of see what Wayfire looks like. It's not bad looking. I'm not sure I would always want to have this kind of window manager going, but it's interesting. I think, uh, yeah, so it's got wobbly windows. You can probably change these effects a little bit. You can go full screen and it snaps and jiggles and snaps and jiggles. So it's kind of fun. Um, I believe this is a Wayland window manager built on a composite on, on the Compiz compositor stuff, so it's pretty cool looking. There's Garuda. So we did all this off of Vento. I haven't installed anything yet. I can go right back to my other system, and it's not going to be any big deal to get it started. I mean, it's just super easy, and this is a nice big lock screen. So again, if I just do restart here, it's going to shut down. And it should come back up on its own to my GNOME system by default. Or GNOME, just depending on how you pronounce that. So since I didn't give it the hotkeys, it comes up right away into the Grub Boot Manager and it'll move forward on its own here in a minute. So that is Ventoy. Pretty great, pretty awesome way to do some simple things. Keep those ISOs handy all the time. Like I said, I've got one built that's got Windows 10, Windows 11 Pro, both on there, plus of several different Linux distributions that I've used multiple times. It's just a really great way to have all those things that you need. A 64 gig USB drive will give you a lot of capabilities for keeping some different distros in there and being able to run those things live like that. So really awesome. I think Vento is great. So get out there and try it. Remember, they've got a subscription system. That's how they keep their project going. And we should always support open source. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe. Tell your friends about it so they can come along on the open source journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.